the second Sunday of Easter. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came in and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I can see the holes of the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here, look. Here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. During excavations in Egypt during the 1920s, archaeologists found a handful of wheat roughly 5,000 years old in a tomb belonging to one of the ancient kings. Someone decided to sow the ancient grains, and to their amazement they grew even after 5,000 years. Now, our faith in the resurrection will be like those dormant grains unless we believe that Jesus is present with us as a real living person. Even though I don't see him in the flesh, he touches my life in the here and now with his reassuring presence, especially in the Mass and the other sacraments. There's an old French proverb which says, God often visits us, but mostly we're not at home, like Doubting Thomas in today's reading. We're not at home if our faith is merely academic, all head, no heart. We're not at home if we believe that science has the answer to everything. Thomas needed observable data before he'd believe anything. That doesn't at all mean that the church is anti-science, as some people make out, some of our enemies especially. The first observatory in the world, for instance, was in the Vatican. The first universities in Europe, founded and run by the Catholic Church, included faculties on natural philosophy and physics. For Catholics, as you all know, faith and reason run conjointly. Doubting Thomas would not believe that Jesus had risen until he had seen him in the flesh, but Jesus gently tells him, you believe Thomas because, just because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Well, that includes us, you and me. I believe the resurrection has more to do with the transformation of the inner man or woman than seeing Jesus actually in the flesh. I think it's interesting to note that on the four or five occasions when he appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, they had problems in recognizing him. Mary Magdalene, for instance, thought he was the gardener. 
The apostles fishing on the Sea of Galilee thought he was a ghost standing on the shore at dawn, at daybreak, inviting them to breakfast. The Emmaus disciples saw him as a total stranger. If Jesus in the flesh were to breeze into this church right now, after the dust had settled, would there be any guarantee that we would go out and live better lives on the strength of it? I doubt it very much. The people who conspired against Jesus and had him put on the cross, they saw Jesus in the flesh. They saw his awe-inspiring miracles, even raising people from the dead. But that didn't sway their hard hearts. The words of Jesus recorded in scripture are far more important than glimpsing him in the flesh. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. When, through the power of the spirit, his words become as it were fleshed out in us, then those dormant seeds I mentioned earlier of Christ's resurrection will spring to life. We will be, as St. Augustine says way back in the 5th century, Easter people, not just in name, but also in fact. The doctrine of the resurrection is the firm bedrock on which our faith is built. Tamper with that and we shake its very foundations. The church wasn't built on doubting Thomases, but on the unshakable belief that Jesus rose from the dead in his human body and is sacramentally present with us in the church until the end of time, like he said he would be. Thank you all very much for listening, and God bless you all.